Okay, I really like Beast Grip. I just do. I was a Kickstarter supporter. Back in 2015, I got the big boy kit. I got the um, wide angle lens, the fisheye lens, and the original depth of field adapter, and that was awesome. Now, since then, I've taken my beast grip onto every production I've ever worked on. It's always been with me. Whether I like used it actively or not, I always had it with me just in case because it's a really good, really versatile tool. And it's held up to some pretty legitimate abuse. It has been, let's see, thrown out of a window, the second story window. It's been thrown out of a moving vehicle. Oh, I swung it into a countertop like a hammer by stupid, stupid accident. And it's been out in all kinds of weather. It's been in rain, it's been in snow, it's been in water. And after all that, it does show some signs of wear, but really not much at all. Like I feel like I could keep using the original one that I got for a really long time. The only significant damage that's happened to it is the cold shoe mount broke, and that's when I swung it into the countertop because I had a light mounted on top of it, and that part went flying. Point is, I know from long running personal experience on real productions that B Script makes a really good product. So I was double, triple excited when they not only sent me a new handset with all the parts that have been upgraded since 2015, they also sent me their Pro Series anamorphic lens and the awesome collab that they did with Kenko Tokina, the 0.75X wide angle lens oh my god they're really cool so i went out and i shot a bunch of like test footage and photographs and stuff so i could do this review i used both the anamorphic pro lens and the kenko wide angle lens and the footage was shot using the galaxy note 10 plus and the galaxy s8 plus for most of the footage i stuck with the default camera apps that are present there i didn't use it in pro mode i used it in the regular auto photo mode or the regular auto video mode or i used an app that i really enjoy it's called open camera it's just a good free alternative to uh, like pro camera apps. So first up is the grip itself. Honestly, the design was excellent to begin with, so I'm happy that not much has changed since I got my first one. But even though there aren't a lot of major differences, I can tell that a lot of things have been improved. For one, with the advent of multiple camera phones comes the new lens mount which is this big open space now, instead of in the old model, it had just like a little keyhole cut out and it has these rubber inserts. The old version features this sort of pinhole design that doesn't really jive with newer phones. So I'm happy to see this change, though I did kind of like the little tracking lines for lining up the lens evenly on the old model. But the new cutout allows better light penetration from the front with less light leakage from the sides thanks to the rubber insert, which also keeps the metal threading from scratching up your phone. Though I gotta say, I've never had that happen to me with the old mount either. Speaking of the threading, that's now matte black instead of the standard brass color, which I guess you could say might reduce light reflections, but I think it's just a nicer, more uniform look. It's nicer in a couple other ways as well though. The old lens mount was made of plastic, whereas this new one is made of metal, and the old one used a single screw to keep it in place, whereas the new one uses two. It's a little bit more secure especially if you drop it and I have dropped it and I have had that screw get loose before so having the two that happens a lot less often. Down from there they've actually added a UNC quarter inch tripod threaded hole and that sits right underneath where the lens is. It's weird to me that it's on the bottom and it's not on the top but it's a really smart feature nonetheless because what it does is it adds a pivot point directly below the lens itself instead of being off to the side and this is really important because if you look at any given DSLR or video camera the threading on the bottom of it that's meant for you to be able to mount it to your tripod, it's always lined up with the lens. The reason is really simple. When you rotate a camera in any direction, you want it to rotate on the lens's axis so that you don't get any unintended parallax. There are really special tripods and tripod attachments made exclusively for this exact reason. It's hard to avoid it on the original B script because all the tripod threads on the bottom of the unit were not in line with the lens. The closest one was at the end with the lens on it. So like I said, I'd like to see the same thread added to the top as well because it would allow you to put like a microphone also directly in line with your lens. If the goals to keep the accessory in line with the lens. For example, somebody who records their audio using a stereo microphone will get a better result with the sounds being on either side of the lens if they can mount it directly above the lens. If I'm honest, it's kind of a minor thing to nitpick about. I never even thought about the parallax thing to begin with until I saw the threading on the new model. Most phones just shoot so wide that the parallax is kind of hard to notice to begin with, but it's a smart design feature for a company that specifically makes a product that lets you use DSLR lenses on your phone. Depending on your choice of lenses, that parallax might become a lot more pronounced. I'm crossing my fingers that one day they'll have a fully metal version of it that's completely made out of the anodized aluminum instead of being some metal parts and some plastic parts. If this entire thing was made out of metal and all of the threading was incorporated right into the metal the same way that this one is right here, it would actually be a lot cleaner of an aesthetic and I think it would probably be a lot more durable. Although I did just finish telling you, even with all the plastic parts on my old one, it's held up just fine after years of using it on every job I've ever done. So there's not really a good reason to make one completely out of metal, 
but I'd be really into it if they did. In addition to the mount itself and the standard extra hardware, this new version came with this neat little movable cold shoe. Kind of reminds me of the ones from Small Rig. I had mine mounted up here on the top left side because it's as far away as I could get from the built-in cold shoe and still have it be on the top of the unit. But to shoot the side-by-side -side test that allowed me to compare the two lenses, I actually took that one off and bought myself a couple of the small rig ones and I put one of those at either end of the newbie grip and then mounted the old one right on top of it. I call it the monster grip. These small rigs are only on here right now for the sake of showing you in the video what I was shooting with. I actually switched back to the one that came with the beast grip right after I was done shooting all the test footage because it's just better. It also comes with a lens tightening tool which I don't know that I need it but it might be smart to use it because it might keep you from being able to over tighten your lens and cause problems and I do have an issue with over tightening things sometimes. There's a couple other minor changes, nothing that really affects anything super vital, like the finish on the metal seems to be smoother and maybe darker, although I'm comparing it to my pretty old unit that's very worn out, and it could just be that I've worn mine out a lot. The tightening screws also seem to be just a tiny bit longer than on the older model, which I think means that the stuff will stay tighter longer because they won't get worn down past the point of efficacy for a while. Anyway, it's lens time. The Kenko Pro Series lens, aka my new actual favorite thing, is a super awesome wide angle lens. This thing legitimately blew me away. It's so clean, it shows so little distortion. I haven't so much as gone out for coffee without taking the B-Script and the Kenko lens with me since it came in the mail immediately it became my favorite thing. I'm actually also a real estate photography instructor, and this is the new mount and lens combination that I'll be recommending to everybody from now on. It just, it produces beautiful results. Fair warning, there are limitations like there always are. For example, I shoot on the Note 10 Plus, which features a built-in super wide lens, and it is wide as hell. Like sometimes it's hard just to keep your fingers out of the shot if you're holding your phone with both hands. The Kenko does not enhance this particular camera mode. It actually limits it because the super wide angle lens in the phone sees mostly the sides of the lens that you just put in front of it. That's all I've really run into so far. I'm sure there's more but I you know that said the default camera is perfect for shooting with the Kenko lens there's no cropping there's no vignetting there's not even a hint of chromatic aberration and the distortion is so minimal you almost have to purposely cause distortion just to notice it it's just it's really nice. And then there's the anamorphic lens. This is definitely a much more niche item. I don't think casual smartphone photographers would really benefit from it at all. It's made for mobile filmmakers to achieve a more cinematic shot and it works by purposely distorting the image so it's horizontally squashed. Essentially the lens is warped in such a way that it sees way off to the sides of where it normally would, but then it squishes all of that vision back down into the normal 16 by nine frame. So when you put it into your editing program of choice and either you multiply the horizontal width by 100 and 33% or you tell your program to treat the footage as anamorphic footage and either way it corrects it out to an anamorphic ratio. Before you correct it, it kind of looks like a funhouse mirror. So if you get one and your footage looks like that, that's why you're supposed to correct it. Now because of the way this lens is designed, you'll also achieve the long horizontal light streaks that are characteristic of anamorphic footage. Pause. I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to point out a personal pet peeve of mine that has bothered me for years, has bothered me for a decade. Very, very many filmmakers on YouTube and elsewhere have a tendency of overusing a little technique that we call letterboxing. It's when you shoot footage in one ratio and then you put black bars at the top and the bottom of your footage to make it look like it was shot at a different ratio. Most commonly, these filmmakers shoot in 16 by nine, then they put black bars at the top and bottom to make it look like they shot it in an anamorphic 2.35 to one aspect ratio. The problem with it is that any filmmaker in the entire world who has ever seen real anamorphic footage can immediately spot fake anamorphic footage. And it looks so extremely super duper incredibly amateurish, especially because most of these filmmakers don't make the black bars the right size. They don't actually know what the ratio is supposed to be. They just think it looks cool to have the black bars at the top and bottom because it's like a movie theater. In addition to that, anamorphic footage actually has a special kind of bokeh and it has special light streaks, which are really characteristic of that format and they can't really be replicated just by putting black bars at the top and bottom. Your bokeh and your light streaks look the same, so it's really obvious when you didn't shoot your footage anamorphically. Time for a history lesson. The anamorphic aspect ratio was caused by the design of the technology available at the time. 
35 millimeter film had a 3-2 aspect ratio, so shooting widescreen footage meant wasting huge chunks at the top and the bottom of every single frame. That translates to missing inches out of every foot of footage that you shot back on that film. It means literally more than a third of your picture was just wasted, empty black space. To solve that problem, they shot with aspherical lenses that stretched the picture vertically. By doing this, they created a larger image in every frame, meaning the result was actually clearer. Because when you shoot on film, there's no pixels. It's perfect vector lines because you're capturing light on a negative. So the more film that you capture that footage onto, the clearer the image actually is. It's a better quality. They recognized that the way that they were shooting was going to waste film. So they devised a method of using more of the film so they could capture more information. Anyway, they'd run it through a projector with an aspherical lens going the other way, and it would shoot the footage out onto a screen, and it would undistort it. What they certainly dirtenly didn't do is shoot 16 by 9 footage and then cover part of it up. In fact, the argument could be made that letterboxing your footage is directly the exact opposite of what anamorphic footage was meant to achieve. Now, for most purposes, for most people, in most situations, I know it doesn't actually matter. In most cases, it's just an aesthetic choice. People like how it looks. I get that, and I don't begrudge anybody that. But I've been really passionate about film for a large portion of my life now. So when I see somebody who just obviously doesn't care enough to learn more about this and do things the right way and understand the history behind these kind of things, it really bums me out. Because it's something that I really love and I invest a lot of my time and effort and energy and money into just so that I can keep doing it and do it better and better and learn more about it and appreciate it more. So if you're out there and you're a filmmaking newbie and you're watching this and you're trying to upgrade your own equipment, consider getting an anamorphic camera or an anamorphic lens substitute or even something like this. It's basically an anamorphic filter for your phone. Stop letterboxing. Start shooting anamorphic. You're going to actually achieve the look you're going for and you're going to stop looking like a massive poser. Now, both of these lenses have a secret secondary benefit, and I'm really surprised that nobody anywhere seems to be talking about it, because it's really cool. These lenses and all the other Pro Series lenses, as far as I know, have a 58mm thread around the inside of the lens. In case you're not familiar, that's a very common threading around consumer lenses of most sizes. Like, any given lens that just comes with a camera when you buy it probably has a 58mm thread around it. That's how, like, the lens cap fits in there. You might see people using neutral density filters. That's how that fits in there. So if you want to use your DSLR lens cap, if you want to use a polarizer, neutral density filter, an effects filter, anything that you could normally put onto the front of one of your regular camera lenses, you can use with the Pro Series lenses from B-Script. That's super cool. I've never seen any other phone lens system that was able to do that. Even the other really expensive options don't bother to do that, and it blows my mind that it's something that Bscript thought to do, and they don't market it at all, and nobody else that I've seen review any of the Bscript equipment even talks about it. No other option I've ever seen has ever included anything like that. When I noticed that this was the case, it immediately made me want to order their 3X telephoto lens and use macro filters with it to see if I could really get some super up-close detailed shots, but in macro, using my phone. I feel like that would be super cool, and I'm I'm actually probably going to do that. It'll be a separate video, but you know. If you've done any experimenting with putting filters onto your B-Script Pro Series lenses, please let me know about it. Show me some of your results, because I, as soon as I noticed it, it totally changed how I plan to use these moving forward. Anyway, uh, keep an eye out for the next review. Bye.